Welcome to a new how-to video. This time, let's dive into some more essential tips about pipeline execution and data movements. This video builds upon the content covered in our previous video, where we introduced the principles of pipeline execution and the two main data movements, distribution and copy. Our new plan involves exploring scenarios where execution outcomes depend on the specific implementation or transforms used. Let's get to work, starting with the first example. In our previous video, we discussed the options of distributing or copying data when connecting a transform to two others. However, what happens when using a filter transform? In this example, we've added a condition to filter values greater than 5 in the data stream. Now, notice that when connecting the filter to the first transform, different options are displayed. In this scenario, you can select a transform to receive the rows that meet the conditions, while the other transform will receive the rows that do not meet the conditions. Select a dummy 1 for true and dummy 2 for false. When we run this pipeline, the filter operation results in a distribution, but it's not a random distribution. True results are directed to dummy 1, while false results are sent to dummy 2. So far, we've looked at scenarios with a single transform connecting to two subsequent transforms, distribution, copying, and distribution through filtering. But what if you need to perform operations like joins or append streams? In the provided simplified scenario, two small data streams are sorted and subsequently joined using a merge join transform. An inner join is performed with the data coming from sort ID and sort ID2 using the ID field. It's crucial to note that the data must be sorted ascending before conducting the join. Hovering over the visible blue info icon shows this message. The message indicates that rows are sent to the merge rows transform to serve as additional information. Additionally, it mentions that the target transform sort ID2 is treated as a special case and that the standard reading rules don't apply in this case. How does this work in practice? In this scenario, the merge join transform does not process any rows until they have been processed by the sort rows transforms. It uses the sorted data from sort ID as a reference and performs the join with the sorted data from sort ID too. During execution, using a similar example with 5 million rows in each data stream, it looks like this. Note that the merge rows transform doesn't start its execution until all rows are sorted, at which point it begins to execute the join and gradually sends the rows to the dummy transform. Now, let's examine a third and final example. Consider a scenario where you concatenate two data streams into one. In such a case, all transforms start simultaneously. But if you sort the data before appending, the execution occurs as in the previous example, with parallel execution continuing after the sorting rows. To stay updated on all our latest content, don't forget to subscribe, like, and tap the notification bell.